this video we're going to do a nostalgic figure. We're going to be doing Transformers Generation 1 Shockwave. Now this guy is pretty expensive. Now, for anyone that has bought this figure and is wondering where do the batteries go, the batteries go in here. So, that, so that's where the batteries go. You need those rectangular batteries that are on this big. And this is wire. Make sure the wire doesn't go the battery place. So, it works. Now, there's two modes. There's the... It's the small bat blast and the multiple blast. This is small blast. And this is the multiple blast. And the transformer is very easy. You gotta start out by taking this barrel out. And be careful when taking out the barrel. Now, during gun mode, you can get Shockwave's feet and just pull it down. You can do that if you want, or you can just leave it up. Depends on you and how you like to do it. Now, when you're transforming Shockwave, if, I recommend that when you want to stand them in gun mode, the feet should be out. Now I'm going to make them from gun to robot back to gun. So, <clears throat> I already got the legs. So now I'm supposed to bring the aiming thing up. I don't know what they call them. The scope. Now make sure the wire's out of the way. Push this up. Now I let the wire rest again. Now I come here to the arms. Pull these pieces down. I pull the legs out like that, and I just bring on the arms. So, the figure now looks like this. What you have to do is to take out the antennas. And come to the legs. So, you see this middle line has to line up with this. You can try by shaking the leg and you can keep doing it you can get it to fit like this and that's shockwave and I have no idea what to do with this barrel just gonna put it right there and transforming it back is really easy too so all you gotta so all you gotta start by doing is Come in, bring these antennas down like that, and the head has to come. And you have to push these feet down. You, sometimes you can bring, you can push the feet down if you want to make sure it gets smaller. Now, a little bit back. Now, before I transform him, I'm gonna go over articulation. His legs, his knees can go up. Mostly, um, it mostly can come up like that. His legs can all can go up and down. His arms has articulation. Now for the now for the nineteen eighties, this is a lot of articulation. Now does the head swivel a little bit? Okay, kind of. Now these. Are not just fake wires. These are the actual wires that that go with the electro that go with the electronics that help Shockwave move. Now you can always bring his arm up, like let's just say he's fighting an auto, an auto. I just push this now and then. And in the 1980s, there was there were rep there were rep symbols because other companies were taking the figures. And selling them for cheaper prices. So, so how do they made these rep symbols? So you can always know if it's really an Autobot or a Decepticon. See that became green now. It depends. Sometimes it's depends on temperature. 
As you can see, it's green. I'm gonna rub it some more. Kind of came dark blue there for a second. It's hard. It's hard to see. So, all right, I'm back. Now, I'm gonna try to rub it again. So, transformation, back to gun, alright, I tried by pushing these legs on like that, so I'm going to tell the back story of Shockwave, so in the Generation 1 cartoon, Shockwave, it, oh yeah, you got to start editing this on first, so Shockwave was a scientist, he loved logic, just like most most of other shockwaves, but in the comics, that's not how it went. In the, so in the comics, shockwave saw himself with more fitting leader. So um, in the early issues of the comics, he took over as the new Decepticon leader, and even bested shot, even bested a mighty Megatron in a battle. Now, no one else did oppose him. Later on, Shockwave led the Seekers, like Starscream, Skywarp, and Thundercracker. And I didn't, I did not see the. I'm pretty sure it was the Dinobots that managed to defeat Shockwave. I'm pretty sure he did just survive the Generation One comics because I'm sure he was in. Pretty sure he was in Regeneration One. Now for comparison, um, let's see what I can compare them to. Alright, so right now, I found the last night drift. So, this is the, um, the once to changer. So, this shockwave is a pretty huge figure, um. Is right next to Titan's Return Hot Rod. And two more comparisons. Here he is right next to Prime Arm. It was basically Strong Arm and Optimus Prime mixed together. And for a Generation 1 comparison, because I know people would want me to compare for a Generation 1 figure. I do have one here right now in my hand. I need to try to squirm him. Here he is, right next, right next to Generation 1 Ron. So... I'm gonna get some robot mode comparisons. Okay, so here he is in robot mode. And for, again, a generation one comparison, I wanna get out my brawn action figure from generation one. And that's how big he is, and that's how big he is. Um, like for example, we got Cup. Not the original Cup, but still, the looks class. So he's roughly around the size of a Voyager. So yeah, around the size of a Voyager. We can just go back. Let me just keep pulling out Transformers to compare them. And this is going to be a terrible comparison because not that many people might have this figure. 
But here he is, right next to Jenna. No, that's not Jenna, actually. Um, here he is, right next to Transformers Prime Starscream. Now, now, when Unicron attacked in Transformers issue number 78, I think, Shockwave and Sunscreen, they were kind of partners, and they both got away from Unicron's wrath. But many other robots weren't lucky. But anyway, that's the review. That's the review, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.